had a reaction to what might happen next Tuesday? Well, I don't know. I can't. I'm just not smart enough to know that. I don't know why the stock market behaves the way it behaves. And I have money in the market, so it doesn't make me happy to not know. So I'm bringing in my best guy, Alex Green, who uh, is a chief investment strategist for the Oxford Club. Now, you may know that I've done business with uh, Alex. I've interviewed him a few times in uh, webinars, okay? The Oxford Club, I have been there with them since 2003. They've done very well for me. They do advertise with us, full disclosure, okay? But it has nothing to do with me selecting Alex Green to be a guest tonight. I just know that Alex Green is pretty smart about these matters, and I want to hear his opinion, and I think you would be wise to listen to it as well. So, Alex, uh, did it surprise you uh, that the market's having a terrible week? Uh, well, I mean, the, the, what the market does always surprises me because um, it's it's impossible to know the news before it comes out, and you, you kind of put your finger on it uh, in, in the opening here. The coronavirus cases have spiked, and people were feeling that we had it under control. Now there's some concern. Germany's uh, closing restaurants and bars again. Is it going to happen in the United States? Are we going to have another uh, economic lockdown, which Biden seems to favor if the epidemiologists tell him that that's what we should do. He's ready to go back into a closure. <clears throat> and so there is some nervousness about the spread of the coronavirus. There's some uh, nervousness, obviously, about the election. The outcome is totally uh, unknown and may not be known even after Tuesday's results come in for weeks. And that's, you know, the market hates uncertainty and that creates a lot of uncertainty. So, so yes, there's a lot that the market's chewing over, but I, I probably should begin by saying, you know, we had a 64% rally from the March 23rd low to the September 2nd high. And so it is natural that the market would consolidate those gains, digest them over a period of weeks. And so there's some of that going on as well. Okay. Now, you would think that the corporations and Wall Street would favor Donald Trump because he's going to keep uh, the taxation where it is, where it, whereas Joe Biden, making no uh, disguise, he's going to raise corporate rates about 7 percent and rates for affluent Americans are going to go up a lot. They're going to pay more yeah. for Social Security taxes, more for capital gains taxes. So you would think True. that Wall Street go, you know, we don't want this guy because he's going to get us back into the Obama economy that really wasn't very vibrant. But right. it doesn't seem to be playing out that way. No. Well, first of all, you're right. Although I would dispute when you raise the corporate tax rate from 21 percent to 28 percent, it's more of a 40 percent hike in rates rather than a 7 percent hike in rates. So it's pretty dramatic. Um, but it's true, if, we, if, if Trump wins the election and we have a Republican Senate, because the House is safe in Democratic hands, um, then we'll return to the pro-growth policies that Trump instituted in the first two years of his presidency. Um, but if we have a Trump presidency and a Democratic Senate, or a Biden presidency and a Republican Senate, we're going to have gridlock because the parties are going to continue to oppose each other. Not much will get done, and there's only so much you can do by executive action. However, if we get a Biden win and the Democratic Senate, then I think that is kind of alarming because then there's no break on, I think, the worst impulses of the far left as far as regulating the economy and raising taxes and passing uh, really anti-growth policies. You know, the far left talks a lot about redistributing wealth. They, they don't talk at all about creating wealth as if it just appears out of nowhere. But anything that the government does to make it easier to start a business or expand a business is clearly a positive for the economy because to just take tax rates. If the, if the corporate tax rate is low, that means corporations have more money to expand, more money to hire, more money for capital spending, more money for research and development, more money for wages. And if you raise taxes, you take those things away. So it's Yeah, but so they're not paying their fair negative. share. They're not paying their fair share. But look, I, I agree with you, which is why I get your stuff. If I didn't agree with you, I wouldn't subscribe, all right? So I agree with you. But there are a lot of Wall Street fat cats supporting Biden and Harris. There's a lot of right. Wall Street money going into that campaign. So I'm going, aren't you betting against yourself? You Look, to the capital gains, I'm just a simple man and a simple investor, okay? I'm not going to pay 50% in New York. It'll be higher than that when I have right. a stock that makes me money. <laughs> 
I'm not. I'm not going to invest in stocks because it's not worth it. It's not the risk reward plummets. So now if you hold a stock for more than a year, a long term cap gain, what is that? 14, 15 percent in that range. It's going to go up to 50 to 60 percent. I'm not going to buy stocks. You have to be out of your mind to do that. No, Biden wants to take the top capital gains rate to 39.6 percent. You'd add on an average 6 percent state income tax. You're in New York. It's even higher. Um, And I don't know a single investor who's looking forward to forking over over half of their gains to the government every time they lock in a profit. But that's what we're looking at if Biden and Harris get their way as far as the tax rates go. And it is a simple matter of what's positive for the economy. And even though the, the huge spending plans, uh, if, again, if we, have a Demo- if we have a Biden presidency and a Democratic Senate, and there, of course, the Manhattan Institute uh, has totaled up all Biden spending proposals. They come to over $11 trillion over the next right. decade. And there are some investors who go, oh, look at this stimulus. You know, obviously the, the Democrats wanted uh, $3.3 trillion in stimulus, uh, I guess following Rahm Emanuel's um, mantra that uh, you never let a crisis go to waste. And isn't it not surprising that the things they want to spend on are all the old progressive policies that they wanted sure. to fund anyway? It doesn't have to do with direct relief for COVID. All right, final question.